Welcome back to Natural to our D&D and tabletop role-playing podcast and talk show where I, Nathan, and my co-host James discuss various topics. But today we are going back, we are flipping the page to the beginning of this lovely year and going over the D&D slash tabletop role-playing resolutions that we made about what better things we can do in our hobby and what things we aren't doing in our hobby and all those fun things. So that's what we're doing today and checking up on either how far we've succeeded or how far we have fallen from those various goals. Yep, it's going to be a fun look back. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's six that months it's only now. Been, yeah, that it's only been a few months. Uh, last year I was wearing a mask because of deadly pathogens, and this year I'm going to have to wear one because of wildfire smoke. How it's things a, change. It's a poem and things... rhymes. <laughs> yeah. The haiku. I'm going to start mm. speaking in haiku. Uh, oh, yeah, that will make this so much better. Well, maybe just to finish the episode, that'll be my thing. <laughs> okay. But what was your uh, first resolution, sir? So the first thing I put down uh, was to be more organized and uh, slash actually use the supplies that I have. Uh, and I, my progress so far, I'm going to give myself a D. Okay. Um, because as I sit here, I do actually have some paper where I've written some things down. <laughs> I've got a truly excellent pencil. Uh, it's, it's really, it's a really nice pencil. Uh, I've got, I've got two sets of dice and my tray. Um, not sponsored by MCDM. <laughs> yeah so i i am I, I am utilizing some of my resources here also i got the idea for this episode because i had my list <laughs> in my you know D D and and natural <laughs> two and talora tales like collection so that's that's like a filing system so not great not great. Okay. There's a lot more I could be doing. Um, I like this grading system. I was just going to go with like, eh, or yeah. But yeah, I'm going to go with the grading system too. We'll see how that goes. Just a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> but uh, I had kind of the same resolution, but in a different way. Uh, a lot of my organization is in the like notes and files and like maps and that kind of thing, like handouts kind of category. Um, I would give myself compared to last year maybe like a c or a b somewhere in the middle we'll go like a b minus uh i've been using like world anvil a lot more which helps uh i've had all of my maps a lot more uh segmented and organized and kind of ready to pull up when needed um i'm usually more prepared than i used to be um but not always so it's somewhere in that middle ground um but i have worked towards it which is i guess a success within itself but yeah, certainly could be doing better in that regard. The physical organization is never going to get better, but that's just something I'll come to accept. Uh, what if you could? If there's one thing that you feel like was holding you back, just you in this section. Yeah, yeah. Um, the habit that I should get into, and I know I should be doing, but I don't because of just being lazy or pushing it off to later is it's always best to like organize or take notes down or put things where they need to be directly after using it. Like when the session ends, I should sit there for five, 10 minutes and be like, okay, this file needs to go here and this needs to go here. And I should remember this note for later, but I don't, I'll end and I'm like, okay, I gotta go take the dog out and I'm like, oh, I'm tired and I eat something. And then I like putter around a little bit and then I come back like an hour or two later and it doesn't always go one-to-one -one. so that's something i should do um and i know i should do but i don't so that would probably be my little sacrifice of yeah i should do that i think i was in general more organized before um back in as mm -hmm. because i i found there's a there's a linear like there's a relationship between my investment 
and my desire to want to put in the effort to be organized. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we, we did a video recently um, talking about how, like, I've had to, it, it hasn't come as easily with my current character. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've had to uh, work at it a little more in order to get that, um, just that drive, I suppose. Uh, and that that is increasing every week, thankfully. Um, but it's shown me that maybe maybe the inverse could also be true. And maybe if I sat down, if I sat down with my character and and did some of these tasks and put some of these things in order, it would start me thinking and and getting ideas and getting excited. So um, I need to I need to re up. That's that's my my old new year's resolution resolution uh my next one is uh to involve everyone in quote unquote extended role play or storytelling and uh this is also referencing sort of that uh in between session play that we also have a video about this is our first video ever actually really wow yeah. <laughs> that's great that's crazy <laughs> Uh, then it's really sad that I have to say that uh, this is an F for me. Yeah, uh, I knew this one was coming up, but I already felt bad. <laughs> yeah, I uh, this has this is just straight up not happened. It has <laughs> not occurred uh, in in the new campaign, and um, part of it is because of uh, real life issues, which there's no point in going into. <laughs> uh, guess what? Busy slash tired. <laughs> You know, who who would have thought? Nobody's ever heard of that before. Um, uh, also throwing in, like, having to work a little harder at this character. Um, one funny thing I feel I've noticed is that the group overall has gotten a little better about regular communication. Mm -hmm. But that, but that between session... Um, sort of storytelling and and sort of the extension of our games is gone right now. Yeah, like it is straight up not happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess you I guess you could also argue that it's because in our current campaign, um, we purposefully don't have this great grand overarching plot. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's by design, and and I I wouldn't change that, but it does mean that our sessions have been more self-contained, mm -hmm. uh, at least comparatively. Yeah, I mean, we could probably do a whole little analysis of like why this might be, but I think what it comes down to is our group changed between Ismiliath and Talora, and so we're kind of getting used to that. We're also getting used to a new pace following Ismiliath as well, because we're not saving the world. We're doing kind of smaller stuff. And the group hasn't, like, so with the Save the World campaign, there is no, like, oh, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna go do something else, because, like, there's no point. Like, that was both yeah. one of the pros and the cons of Ismiliath, is the group was a group and is going to be a group, because if you're not, everyone's dead. So, like, there is no beating around the bush there. Whereas with Talora, there's a lot of, like, do you want to do this? Eh, not really. Or, you know, I will, but I don't like it. Or, you know, I thought we should do something else. I told you so. And so, like... There's this, like, I don't want to say friction, but a disconnect or a an option to opt out to some extent, which then makes those interactions less forced, which then makes them less frequent. Um, but our group does communicate about the game between sessions, but there's not that, like, drive to fill in the gaps or get to something that we didn't get to on camera or to dive deeper into a conversation that didn't get fleshed out because it's not quite there yet, I guess. Or to have, or to have something that we're trying to get to, mm -hmm. and so we want to get something done before we sit down to the next session, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, though. We had what I feel like was a first for our group, um, for you know, for the most part, which was a conversation in character where one of the characters was straight up saying, "I don't want to do that." Mm -hmm. 
and it's the first time it's really happened in our group. Like we've had we've had conflict within the group, uh, mm -hmm. in character, um, and and things of that nature. But this was the first time I think that there was just a a straight up no. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I think it's a bad idea. Um, and I was glad, especially kind of looking back on it, because it's an interesting dynamic. It's an interesting mm -hmm. thing to have happen. You know that that kind of conflict of what do you do now but at the same time i very much was sort of stuck thinking what do we do now <laughs> i don't know yeah. how to handle this yeah. um well so on the but... the side of this of like as a dm i would love because we constantly have like downtime in our games or like days we don't account for or like you know jumps from one part to the next and it would it feels so natural for me for players to be like okay you know, we're not going to be doing anything in universe for like a week. It's probably a good time for me to reach out to X or Y or Z and try and either get a better understanding of what we're doing or address something that we did in the game or try and go back and flesh out something that we only touched on. But it just doesn't seem to have caught yet. And so all I can really do is provide the opportunity and hope for the best, but it hasn't seemed to catch. So I think it will, um, mm -hmm. but we are... Um, again, this is a whole discussion for <laughs> fitting on another separate mm -hmm. video. Um, but we're having to earn those things in a way that they just sort of flowed, uh, kind of last time around, uh, sort of flowed last time around. And I don't, uh, again, the whole other discussion as to why that mm -hmm. happened, you know, who who made it happen and uh, what mm -hmm. it's just different yeah different things be different man <laughs> yeah but yeah, as far as the resolution yeah i would agree that that has uh not really gotten off the ground at all but we still have half a year so that's right there's still time <laughs> it's never too late what's your what was your next one so one of the ones that I put down is to enjoy the game more or try and stress less about the game so I can enjoy the game more, which if I'm being honest with myself, I'm probably in the C or D area. If I'm being nice to myself, I'll give myself a C minus to just pretend like I'm doing okay. Um, I always am overanalyzing the game to death. And I'm very much the kind of person who fixates on like what we could be doing better versus holding up what we've done. That's great um, because I want to improve. I always like have this fixation on fighting the the little tiny things that like endlessly bother me. Um, so that's still there. It's still rearing its ugly head. Um, I would say that I have a healthier attitude towards our game than I did with this Milia because almost just kind of by design again as Milioth was so big and so massive and like so many things were going on all at the same time that like it was a lot of work just like mental energy to keep everything straight and make sure everything checked out and everyone's different directives made sense um so it's nicer with Talora and also I've allowed myself to be like oh it's complicated to play next weekend why don't we just do something else or why don't we take the weekend off? Whereas in Azimilioth, I felt this like this fear of like, if we miss a Sunday, we're going to die. We'll never play again. Like we can't miss a Sunday. Um, so I'm a lot more open to taking it slow because I'm pretty confident that missing a week isn't going to shatter our routine. Um, so all those things have kind of helped, but I would not say that I have succeeded too well in this category. <laughs> You haven't you haven't conquered it, huh? Yeah, I mean, I guess slowly I'm working towards it, but I could be doing much better than I am. But a lot of it just comes down to like how I function, so it's really hard to flip that switch. So there's a life lesson in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, my uh, my third one. I'm I'm gonna keep this quick. I think uh, we don't need to dwell on it for a long time. Uh, read the books. Like actually read read the books. Um, I initially I would say this is another F. Um, in in terms of just not having done it. Uh, but in addition to like copy and pasting some of the uh commentary from the last one onto this one as well, something a little unique happened in that 
the company that makes D&D had us all wondering whether we were going to burn our books <laughs> or not. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so that really took the wind out of my sails uh, as far as like wanting to invest myself in the ecosystem and yeah pouring over their material Mm -hmm. uh suddenly my you know favorite creators that i follow that make content for this game uh and and everything like that were were trying to figure out whether they were going to be involved at all anymore Mm -hmm. um so i i have not yet I have not yet warmed back up to them. Uh and and so it it kind of leaves a, a little a little bitterness in the old in the old uh, maw to pick up one of those books and and just think about that whole mess that didn't have to happen. Didn't have to be that way. I think the most like successful people that have kind of dealt with that is they've removed 5e from wizards of the coast entirely and that's kind of what the community has done as a whole now that it's in the uh the creative commons license like wizards of the coast can no longer take that back or do anything in that sphere so 5e really is kind of its own thing even though it is 100 percent you know branded and owned and operated by hasbro and wizard of the coast um but yeah, like the best way to people to try and swallow that pill and move forward is taking it and being like, 5e is mine now, it's not yours, which is not easy for everyone, but it's probably the best way to go about it moving forward. I don't... I don't consider myself especially affluent. I haven't founded a company, uh, at least as of this recording. <laughs> But I am, I am shocked at least a couple times a year, every year, at the ability of people who are educated, professionals, who, who make a living at this stuff, uh, at their ability to screw the pooch <laughs> and screw that pooch hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, just beggars belief sometimes the these these things and and how did was there was there nobody that there, there should be there should be a class in business school at this point that is dedicated to how to not surround yourself with people that are only going to agree with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, on one hand, you say that, like, oh, it surprises me every time, like, like, endlessly these people do these things. But on my side, it's like, this is just destined to happen because when a company grows and earnings are there, eventually there's going to be that gap between the people at the top and the people that enjoy whatever the fuck the actual business is or the content is. And so then they have no perception of what they think is the right business decision is going to impact what's currently earning the money and that's what i think 100 percent happened with wizards of the coast and the ogl thing is like the people at the top are like why are we giving away our license for free and someone probably amongst the crowd was like because everyone will hate us if we don't do this and they're like well that's their problem billy do it and here we are so i'm not too surprised (laughs) Uh, and now and now the former biggest names in D and D are are all about to to start their own stuff. Mm-hmm. They, that uh, they... somewhat segues into the kind of sort of resolution I had of me trying to produce content or put things out there into the void um, of like various things that we do or that I make for our game. And again, I, I, it's kind of sad that none of these things I can go A plus gold star, but. Uh, I'd give myself a B on this one. Um, I've put out a handful of like actual maps and not only just like put them in the internet and be like, hey, download this if you want, but like making proper like cover art for them and different versions of them and and a format that's consumable and like, you know, giving them a bit of presentation so people can actually use them for their games. Uh, So I've actually done that and went through the process of that and figuring out what publisher to go with and all the stupid stuff or hoops you have to jump through to get there um, and what websites are available what tools are available so again considering that there's six months between 
now in the end of the year there's plenty of time for me to dive back into that rabbit hole um but yeah i haven't gone after that with any sort of fire but i have checked it off to say that i have done it so um that that's probably more than most people can say for their resolutions so <laughs> i yeah no, I, think I try to should. keep mine somewhat simple so that if we did have this video, I could be like, hey, I'm not a total <laughs> failure. <laughs> uh, speaking of not being a total failure, my next resolution was to try other games and systems. You're not. We did play Iron Sworn. And I'm going to give, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to give myself a C. Uh, a C because uh, we did look at Iron Sworn. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, I, we are going to get back to that at some point. Um, just because it it was interesting, uh, I do like that concept. It's it's a way better solo, like potentially a solo D and D game without being D and D, mm -hmm. uh, or better than playing D and D by yourself, which you mm -hmm. can technically do. But I've tried it. Yeah, it's, it's not built for it. it. It's not the same. Um, I also uh, have the book for Gaslands, which is a a post-apocalyptic car combat tabletop game it's not really a role-playing game it's it's more of a war game mm -hmm. uh, that uses matchbox cars and hot wheels cars so that's cool uh, i haven't actually played a game of it but um i'm gonna give myself a pass on that because how are you gonna find the, someone yeah <laughs> yeah it's not the kind of thing you can play online really mm -hmm. it really loses something in in the in that translation i imagine uh, so there's Iron Sword and there's that. Um, I grabbed the new edition of Savage Worlds, uh, okay. or the is it an is it a new edition, or is it just like a a new um, like release of it, like an update? I yeah. I don't remember off the top of my head uh, uh, because it's been a little while since I cracked that open. But Savage Worlds is the other system that I have the most time in. Um, actually played. Uh, a full campaign in Savage Worlds, uh, and it's a fun system. Uh, I would I would play it again. Um, doesn't really get talked about a whole lot, but then again, maybe no systems that aren't D and D get talked about very much. Um, but grab the update uh, of that. So I yeah, I'm keeping my ear to the ground, um, and something tells me that there will be like alpha tests and beta tests and early access for the half dozen new systems that are about to be put out by mm -hmm. the biggest names in the online hobby space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I think everybody looked around at other options when the whole OGL thing was like up in the air. I saw so many posts of like, should I quit 5e and move to Pathfinder? My group is already, you know, moving to something else or et cetera. Already done it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure this year is the year of other systems and we've toyed around with a few. I, still want to try and bring iron sword into our group and play it as a group and see how that goes because i feel like that could be interesting um but that's somewhat of a hard sell at the best of times but yeah but we have technically tried other things so i'm content to call that a success another check kind of a green check mark yeah it's not a check plus <laughs> but it's a check mm -hmm. uh what's your next one uh i mean that was the majority of it like we talked about a few like kind of resolutions that you might want to have at the end of our video. And one that we talked about was communication um, and not letting things like fester or lie. And while that wasn't one of the ones I put out there in the video, it is something that I try and keep check of because uh, that was another kind of big thing with his million. There's like so many things about the campaign. I just kind of, I knew were coming up or I suppressed them or I bottled them up or I didn't want to bring them up because I didn't want to upset anybody. And so I'm trying to be more aware of that this time around and being a bit more open about communicating certain things. And I feel like I've done better, but it might also just be that our group is more established and we have those lanes of communication now kind of laid out. Um, so I wouldn't again, call it like an A plus, but I would always say that that's in the B, C category of me generally improving about not just suffering in silence and waiting for something explosive to happen that then becomes a bigger problem. So communication. Yeah, we need to. <laughs> We're gonna. Speaking of updates, when should we 
at some point we'll need to do like a second edition of that video because I think we would be tighter and yeah yeah Maybe like I mean, a yearly like an annual update <laughs> every every year i mean if we ever run out of content we can always go back to our earlier ones and just redo them but i don't know how <laughs> it might be somewhat depressing to see how little they change oh uh, well i wouldn't compare them i would just <laughs> tell myself yep that was better and yep get on with my life <laughs> but i think uh, that's the majority of mine unless you have more I have one uh, left, which was to seek out new fiction. Ah, um, yes. And I'll give myself a B minus. Um, I think what I had in mind at the time was again books. Um, but I also don't feel that there's, you know, reading a book is intrinsically automatically better than watching a well done series or film. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm not saying they're substitutes for each other. They aren't. But I feel comfortable uh, finding new series or films that are going to give me new ideas or different ways of looking at old ideas. Um, and, yeah. I, I, I don't want to sit here and make a list of <laughs> shows uh just to say that you know that's one of the things that i have managed to do in this day of every absolutely everything having a screen you know uh, we're not we're not far from going to the bathroom and watching netflix on the toilet i don't mean on the toilet <laughs> i mean on the toilet <laughs> as a little screen that comes up between your legs yeah it's it, it, it's the button is next to bidet so you have to be careful <laughs> uh so it's that that and podcasts you know it, mm -hmm. squeezing those in wherever you can uh and squeezing them out wherever you can what e -e -e -e. That, that was awful that was so bad uh I'll, it'll be interesting to see whether you leave that in or not. I, I guess um, I have to now. <laughs> now we're referring to it. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's you know, uh, that's probably my highest grade for the resolutions, but it was also mm -hmm. the easiest one, honestly. Mm -hmm. So it you know, uh, on the curve, it's it's lower, but mm -hmm. um, that's that's one thing that I always I always want something different i always want to try new stuff um keep keep the brain meats active so that one i feel good about and that if any of them get to a or a plus by the end of the year <laughs> uh it'll be that one well my closing uh little question or prompt was going to be what is your honest prediction of where you think you're going to be at the end of the year compared to now? Mm. So looking at the other resolutions, um, probably not going to make a lot of headway on trying other games and systems. We'll play Iron Sworn again. Um, but I, I just, I don't have the appetite mm -hmm. To try to find people to play stuff with locally, mm -hmm. um, even as like one offs, that's a personal issue that you know, probably and even like one offs and one shots don't really expose you to a system all that well, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so I, you know, that I think is going to turn into an academic exercise. It's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of like, oh, I read the rules and it seems cool, or I mm -hmm. found a YouTube video where people were playing it star trek adventures is another one like i would love to actually play that but it's an investment mm -hmm. you know uh that that takes arguably more effort than putting a D, &D group together because of the the venn diagram of people uh, that mm -hmm. you have to look for um reading actually reading the books we'll see you know we'll see if they can keep their filthy feet out of their mouths for the rest of the year <laughs> um if if my mood improves um and then being more organized and and then involving everyone in the extended role play um i i think i can get those up to b okay by the end of the year 
I'm glad that you're not aiming for the A, so you can either succeed or... <laughs> I'm trying to be realistic, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to be honest with myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and you make... The, this is, you know, some, some non-D&D advice that you can apply to anything. So pay attention, children. When you're setting goals... Aim for the moon, but shoot for the stars. No. <laughs> you, you got that all wrong. No, that's right. That's how you use that saying, right? No. <laughs> the, 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 I'm not... No, no. <laughs> Google it later. I'm not going to take up this time. Uh, the, it's important to set reachable goals for yourself. Attainable goals mm -hmm. are, are actually motivating. Uh, and also can provide data. Uh, and if you do more than those, great. That is always better than setting a goal that you know that you probably can't hit and then falling short as you should have known you would. I think I used that correctly. Google is telling me that I did. I then you Google it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do agree with your little advice. Did you ask Chat GPT or what? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Chat GPT <laughs> is my G. But uh no, that one hundred percent tracks. It's like you want to have something obtainable to strive for because if you're always constantly trying to be about a perfectionist, which I might have some experience in, uh you're only gonna constantly disappoint yourself, which uh it's not the healthiest routine to get into. Speaking of sayings, if you've ever heard, uh, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Uh, that's what that means. <laughs> if you are so focused on perfection that it grinds to a halt or blows up in your face, <laughs> that, yeah, you're not helping anybody. Yeah. As far as uh, grading myself on where I might be, I think I'm more than likely going to end up roughly where I'm at with most things. Um, I would like to think that taking the game a little easier, being more easygoing about it will improve. Um, but I kind of subscribe that more to the group, getting more in the groove of things versus like anything that I can really do personally. Um, so that's really the only one that I see changing a fair amount. Uh, again, producing some of the content that I put together for the game will probably continue to happen, but I would never escalate it to be like, oh yeah, like I'm really out there and like I could call myself like a publisher. It's more just here's a handful of content for other people to use, um, which I'm fine with. So yeah, I think, uh, overall I'm kind of where I'm going to be at and I'll coast a little bit, but always try to improve slightly but we'll see so there is a whole half year a lot can happen in half of a year that keep trying mm -hmm. you know that's all uh sometimes that's all you can do uh but mm -hmm. that's that's enough you know <laughs> and i i don't know who needs to hear this but you keep trying too yeah. and uh i'm gonna ask for something specific in the like and subscribe and comment below section of the video which we mm -hmm. have arrived welcome uh, uh, and this is not something that I brought up before we started recording, so surprise! Um, I want to do a mailbag episode, and in order to do that, I need a bag of mail. Not literally, it's a metaphor. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry about it. Point being, I want to see in those comments, and I'm going to bring it up. I think over the next couple of videos, give people time. I want to see your questions uh, that we reserve the right to answer in a video uh, where we are taking people's questions. So uh, put them down there. And while you're down there, like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't want all the questions to come from our friends and family members. I want some from some viewers. <laughs> so uh, put them down there and uh do us a solid and as the great philosopher nathan once said aim for the like button but shoot for the comments section okay i'll take it <laughs> okay yeah there we go
I know I can get you on board. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Is that too all... is that too long to get fit on a mug? I'm more of a mug guy these days. You could fit that in the mug. You can have like a little graphic in between the two sayings. Oh uh, no, a water bottle. Mm -hmm. You got plenty of room on a water bottle. Yeah, or like a thermos or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Until next time, folks. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs>